So I've had this idea for ages now to build a wind-powered generator. More recently, my thought has been to build a steam-powered generator. So I started to acquire some parts to do this, this stainless steel bits, which almost exactly fit. So this is gonna be the piston for my new steam engine with the idea to drive a generator. So the more important part is gonna to be to build the generator before I work on the steam engine. There's a few different ways that I've thought to do that. Number one being a brushed DC motor, which would be this. You'd have these commutators here um, that would send power through to these three various electromagnets that interfere with these two permanent magnets to, um, as you electrify those three electromagnets, um, it will spin to attract or repel one of those permanent magnets and give you a spinning motion. Um, the contact here through a brush, it makes contact and as it spins, it then breaks contact and makes contact with a different coil, which then continues to spin it and does the same thing. So um, you obviously need a carbon brush here to make contact as it's spinning and those wear out and they're quite inefficient. So these brushed DC motors are great for lots of applications, but generating electricity is not one of them. They're not very efficient. Um, the other option I thought of was using um, a brushless uh, motor. So if a brushed motor is not very good, surely a brushless one is better. But these have the same problem that they aren't very efficient. You have, um, I think it says 14 windings here. Um, and this is from a drone. This is a 970 kV motor. So for each, for every 970 uh, RPM, you get one volt. So this has to spin pretty bloody fast to make a decent voltage. Um, and then that would mean a lot of gears or belts, which is going to reduce the efficiency by quite a lot. So these are not a very good option because they're too fast. They're too high KV for uh, this application. Leading us to stepper motors, which are kind of the opposite. These are a, they're like two brushless motors in one, in a way. That's why you have four wires and not your typical two. This has two wires, positive, negative, very simple. This has three wires, because it's a three-phase motor, slightly more complicated. Um, but this has four wires, which seems a bit counterintuitive, uh, except when you look at a diagram of one of these, which I'll throw up somewhere over here, um, you realize it's effectively two of these in one housing. You have two separate stages, we'll call them. I'm not sure the actual technical terms, but the when the motor is spinning, it's making power from two separate motors, two separate generators in our application, we'll call it. Um, and if you think about it that way, it's pretty simple. You spin this and you get power out of here and you get power out of here. It is AC power though. And AC would need to be rectified to DC for our purposes. So lots of ways to do that. You can build a rectifier using a bunch of diodes. This is gonna be a bridge rectifier, a full bridge rectifier, which is gonna take that AC waveform and chop it in half and then take the top half and stick it on the bottom half to create a nice normal, what we call normal, uh, DC constant voltage or constant current. So this is what I'm using for that application. These take up to a thousand volts in and will output up to three amps DC. So you can get them in higher ratings, but this is, this is 12 Australian dollars for 15 pieces. So they're really quite affordable. Uh, so I'm going to take two of these, one on each of these AC outputs to make two DC outputs. Now you can then take those DC outputs and put them in series or put them in parallel to increase either your voltage or your amperage. With this motor, the higher the RPM, the more voltage you're gonna get. So we're gonna to have to see at the RPMs I wanna work with if this is gonna work better for me in parallel or in series. But for this first step, let's put this all together and do a bit of testing.
So I'm gonna take a little piece of proto board or proof board. My basic plan for this project or for this circuit is gonna be this. So servo motor makes power, goes through a rectifier to take that AC and turn it into a nice usable DC for us. The voltage is gonna be variable based on RPM. So that's gonna go through this, which is a buck boost converter. This can take any input from two to 80 volts DC and output any output from two to 80 volts DC. So it can buck the current or boost the current, which means, or the voltage, sorry. Which means that um, if this is only putting out three volts, because um, it's hardly even spinning, because there's not much steam or wind, uh, that's gonna take that three volts and boost it up to we'll just say we're going to use 12. Uh, so then we're going to have a 12 volt output at a much lower current because we have to take something away to get that voltage to increase. But if this is spinning really fast and making 60 volts, this is going to take that 60 and reduce it down to 12. And uh, if we were making 60 volts at one amp, that's 60 watts. So whenever we reduce that down to 12 volts, we're going to end up with about five amps exactly five amps, um, minus the loss of this, which is quite lossy. These are not that efficient. So anytime you see a giant heat sink, you can assume that it's probably pretty wasteful because it has to burn off that heat. But in this case, it should be good enough. So that's the basic circuit. Generators through rectifier, through a voltage regulator. Uh, and then I'm thinking about throwing this in, which I found. This is a 68, what, 68 farad? capacitor, 68,000 microfarad capacitor. Um, this is a big freaking capacitor. Uh, it's only 40 volts too. So if our voltage coming out of this is close to 40 at the RPM I want, I might throw in a giant capacitor here, which will give it some sort of filtration. So the power would come in through the capacitor into this. And if the power does slow down for a few minutes, this is gonna keep maintaining that. Don't know if it'll actually be useful or necessary, but I have it, it's been sitting around for ages and it'd be kind of cool to use it in a project. A very big capacitor. You can see on the front of this chip, our AC goes on those middle two pins and then our DC comes out of these two here. So for this test, I'm just going to take these and put them in this orientation. Um, and we'll see if we need to adjust that later, but that'll be good enough for testing. All right. So there are two, as I said before, there's two separate coils in here. Um, and when this spins, it's going to make these two separate, effectively two separate generators. So uh, we need to make sure that we use or we wire up these two coils um, correctly. If you're using this for building a CNC machine or a 3D printer, you can reverse any two of these wires and that'll reverse your direction because of the way that the stepper driver drives these motors. Um, but in our case, we don't want to have coil A and coil B interfering. We want to treat them as two completely separate entities. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're using the right coils. We're not using one wire from coil A and one wire from coil B. We want to make sure we're using coil A to one of these rectifiers and coil B to the other one. So easiest way to test that is with your multimeter. Just go to your ohm reading and look here. So right now these two wires are not connected. There's infinite resistance between green and blue meaning that these belong to separate coils. But that means that green and black belong together and therefore blue and red. Great. So just to walk back through this circuit, we're gonna have, uh, well, we have two AC outputs, one here on this green-black pair and one on this red-blue pair they each go through to their own rectifier, which takes AC in on those middle two pins, and then outputs DC 
on these two side pins. Those two side pins are wired together here. That gives us our output on these two sides. So let's clip on our multimeter again, and let's see what kind of voltage we get. Let's give this a spin and see what happens. So I'm getting three, six. So getting a couple of volts. Let's try spinning it consistently and see what happens. We're getting 13.6 volts, which is quite a nice voltage for automotive applications. Uh, but that's, that's pretty good. So let's see how many amps we're getting. All right, 1.6 amps. All right, so pretty simple setup. We have the stepper motor to rectifiers. Going to the input of a buck boost converter the output of the buck boost converter going to the inputs here of my multimeter which we will set back for voltage i'm not sure what this is set for from the last time i used it probably 12 volts i'd imagine but let's check cool 13 and a half so as you see, no matter how fast I went this time, it never went up to 50 volts. Last time that was making, I think, 54 volts or so. Whereas now it's making 12.4 over here. So that's a good thing. Let's see how many amps we're gonna make. So 4.75 amps. 4.75 amps at 13.4 volts is 60 watts, which is pretty good. I think this speed, whatever that was, is probably reasonable for my little steam engine to achieve. So this voltmeter is on the capacitor slash the output from here. And then the amp meter, I think we're going to leave disconnected for now and we'll then hook that up as a load on the capacitor once it's charged to see what happens. Wow, so we charged up that capacitor really quickly. So we brought it all the way up to 40 volts um, within just like a few seconds. Um, so now if we take our amp meter, let's just see at a dead short how many amps it dumps. Oh, I didn't see. I'll try and flat freeze it on the frame, but I didn't quite see what that jumped up to. This is a very slow meter, so it's probably not a very, um, not a very accurate gauge, but obviously with that big spark, there was plenty of, plenty of amps there. Welded that. Welded that on. So we'll charge the capacitor using the motor, using its DC output through here. We're also checking the voltage. Uh, this is the voltage of the capacitor. And then the capacitor is powering this buck boost with no load. Let's just charge up the cap and then we'll put a load on here and see what happens. So capacitor is fully charged, up to 40 volts. This is on. Now let's check the load on this meter. I mean, that was half an amp for a couple seconds. So that actually packs a bit of a punch. I might use this. Oh, my drill battery's flat. Well, that's probably enough experimenting for, for now, but. We have definitely proven, what have we proven? Well, what we've proven in my opinion is that this is a pretty good setup. So stepper motor, two 
bridge rectifiers giving us a nice DC output going into a big ass capacitor coming out into a buck boost converter. The capacitor is there to uh, smooth everything out. Not that these really need much smoothing, but it will give us a nice little buffer. So if this wants to pull a bit more than the motor's making, maybe to start up a little motor or something, this is gonna help provide that extra boost. Um, and then this guy just chooches along and we'll keep refilling the capacitor and also powering the buck boost. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So now I just need to build a steam engine to drive that and we're gonna be in business. Thanks for watching.